when we talk about huge amount of data, CSV and Excel cannot handle the same because they are simple file systems. Uh, to handle large amount of data, you need a strong RDBMS like SQL Server, Oracle and so on. Now, if you see, Power BI is owned by Microsoft. SQL Server is owned by Microsoft. It's the flagship RDBMS of Microsoft. So if you see in the industry around, SQL Server and Power BI is a very, very natural ecosystem, wherein Power BI is used for front-end visualization and SQL Server is the back-end. So in this lab too, we will try to understand how Power BI can connect to SQL Server and also we will look into various options like import and direct query. So the first thing is, uh, let us go ahead and install SQL Server. So you can see that I have searched in Google SQL Server download and that, that takes me to the first link of Microsoft. And if you go to this link out here, um, you can see that there are lots of uh, flavors of SQL Server which you can install like cloud and so on. I would suggest to install the developer edition. This developer edition is a full featured free edition and specifically meant for uh, learning and for knowing the features of SQL Server. So first go ahead and install the SQL Server developer edition. The second thing is, you know, this is a Power BI class. So I won't be really concentrating on SQL Server. And I would really, really suggest you to go and watch this complete video series, which you can see I'm flashing on the screen, which has everything about SQL Server, you know, so the, right from the basics, uh, the installations, you know, how to create tables, how to create database and so on, right? At this moment in this video, my goal is to create data in SQL Server, to create some database and tables in SQL Server and then show that thing into Power BI, right? So go ahead and download the SQL Server Developer Edition. Once you download SQL Server Developer Edition, you get something like the SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm going to go and click on that. So let us go ahead now here and create databases and tables. So there you can see it is opening. Uh, so let me connect. So I'm going to go and create a database called as uh, Power BI. Uh, so we can say this is Power BI database, right? And inside this database, I'm going to go and create tables. So you can see right out here, uh, Power BI uh, database is seen. So if you see in our first lab, we already had this customer data. So you can see that we had this customer data and also we had the vendor data which manufactures that product, right? So let us go ahead into this database and import both of these files. So I'm going to go to all tasks right out here and I'll say import file, flat file. Remember that it is a CSV file. So uh, I'm going to say import file out here. Again, I would suggest please go and uh, see the SQL Server videos, but at this moment, um, let us quickly go and import this file and do our demo. So lab one data, uh, the file to be imported. Uh, let us now, now when this data will be imported, it will create a table inside this database, right? So let us give this name as TBL customer, rather than saying lab one data. And I'll say next. So those are all the fields. Those are all the data types of the columns. I'll just leave it at, at this moment as it is and we'll just say finish. So right out here, so you can see I'm going to go and hit refresh. You can see that I have the TBL customer with all the data, right? Great. Also, let us very quickly go and import in the same way uh, our other file we had, which had country, right? So I'll just say TBL products. Next, and I'll say, uh, it's asking for some column names out here. We have to give some column names. Let's give some proper column names. So this is, uh, that is actually the product and that is actually the vendor name, right? So I'll just say this is the product name and this is the vendor name. So very quickly, I'm just importing both of these files uh, into our database. So, so there it is, TBL customer, TBL products, right? So now we have both the tables inside SQL Server. Now let us go ahead and open Power BI and let us see that how we can go and load this data into Power BI. 
So now you can see that I have opened the Power BI desktop. So now in order to go and import the data from SQL Server, again, we have to do the same thing. We have to say go get data, get data from where SQL Server, right? And uh, we will give the server name, right? So this is the server name at this moment. And uh, the database, the database is uh, Power BI, right? And uh, you can see now uh, there are lots of options out here, but uh, these two options are very important. For example, if I say import out here, import means the data will get imported into the Power BI uh, file, into the Power BI itself. If I say direct query, that means the data will not get imported out here, but every time if he wants data, he will actually go to SQL Server, right? So at this moment, I will just say import. We don't have too much data, right? So I'm going to go and just say import out here. And once I say import, you can see that he says, okay, from this database, which tables you want to select? So I want to select the TBL customer and TBL products, both of them, and I will just say load it. So once you load the data, you will find the same kind of tables and fields created at the right hand side. So at the right hand side of Power BI, you can see uh, right out here, these are the customer, the TBL customer, the TBL products, right? You can also see that this is your data. You can also see this is your model and so on, right? So I'm going to go here uh, to this table out here and I will say that this is customer name, this is product, right? Also, I'll go to the table out here and I will say that this is product name vendor. So other things all remain same. So whatever uh, visualization we have done by using uh, the CSV file, all that visualization you can go and do with uh, SQL Server right away here, right? In the initial section of the video, I said that uh, when you are connecting to your SQL Server, it gives you two options, import and direct query. So uh, let us go and explore both of these options in more detail. Uh, so you can see here, uh, I'm connecting to the server and remember that we had this Power BI uh, database, right? So if you see uh, in this window, I have opened up uh, the Power BI uh, report, you know, using import, right? So if you remember, I said import means the data is taken from SQL Server and imported into the Power BI cache. And after that, even if SQL Server goes down or even if SQL Server does not exist, still you can go and preview your report. In case of direct query, Power BI will always need SQL Server to be on, right? So for example, now let us say this report, I'm going to go and make it by using direct query. And this report, which you see out here is actually using import. So if you see, uh, this is direct query out here, I'll say load. So if you look at some of the differences, you know, which are very logical, you will see out here is, for example, now this is uh, the Power BI direct query. You can see that you do not see data sources out here. For example, look at this. This is import. So in import, you can see that there is data, right? So you can see that there is data. But if you go and see the direct query, we don't see the data tab out here because now the data will come from SQL Server, right? So in other words, uh, when I go and click over here, you know, amount and customer name and so on. So at this moment, you know, uh, it will go and it will fetch data from SQL Server. Okay. So if for some reason, if let us say our SQL Server goes down, so you can see here, I'm going to go and stop SQL Server. This would be very interesting to see here. So you can see now I'm, I'm I'm, I'm stopping my SQL Server instance. So if you see now, my import will keep working. So, you know, in, if you look at this is my import here, this is my imported Power BI, right? Means this report is using the import uh, uh, feature, right? Uh, so if you see here now, I can still go here and prepare the reports, right? So I can still go and say that, okay, show me the amount uh, product wise, right? So I can still see the report. I can still make reports because everything is coming from the cache, from the Power BI cache. But watch over here. Now, if I go and try to create a report here, for example, let us say I create a table and if I try to take, you know, the amount, right? So you can see here I've selected amount and let us say if I try to select customer name, 
Oh, where is the value coming from? Uh, okay, this one I think is still in the cache. Let us take something else. Let us try to take the year as well. Look at this. So uh, you can see here now this amount and customer name was already in the cache. So that's why it was able to show it. But look at it. When I selected year and product, you can see the small sign out here, which is actually going and trying to connect to SQL Server. And um, uh, after some time, you know, I should actually see some error here saying that I cannot connect to SQL Server. So you can see at the right hand side, or oh, there it is. You can see cannot display visuals. If I go and see the details, it says that your SQL Server is not is not there. It the the instance is not running at this moment, right? So direct query means it will always need SQL Server, and import means the data will be imported into Power BI cache. And after that, you do not need the SQL Server instance. Now, uh, you should use import, you know, only when your data size is small. So do not use import, you know, for large amount of records because then your Power BI cache will not be able to handle it. It will be very slow, right? And direct query you will use, you know, when you have huge transaction tables like must be millions of records, you know, where you want to go and get data. So rather than uh, importing those millions of records into Power BI cache and doing things, RDBMS has special powers of performance, of indexing and so on. So you'd like to utilize that, right? So if your data size is small, use Power BI. If your data size is very huge, then you use Direct Query. So that brings us to the end of lab two. Now in lab three, we will run through some more visualization components like line chart, area chart, KPI, funnel graph, gauge and so on. So lab three will be more about visualization components and some important tips and tricks, you know, which can make your visualization better. So thank you and happy learning.